う少しで真実とやらがつかめそうだったのに<笑>ああ入院なんかしてる場合じゃねえ先にプレイをわびておきますはん<笑>うっ勝手なことをして下手したら命を落とすところだったのよ何でも自分たちだけでやろうとしないで周りを頼りなさい、うん大人を信用してくれてもいいじゃない。Yeah. Perhaps the most important adult in his life. 以上<笑>階級にあるまじき暴言と暴力。お許しください。あ、いいよ。No, no, they're right. She's right. かったですピンタの音とがめは。そんなもんないない。<笑><笑>なんでそんなに気使うんだよ。敬語だって使う必要ないよ。<laughs> yeah, <laughs> That's cute. That's cute. <laughs> okay, let's see what else we got here. あのさ、ドシスシミスターピースライトなるまで出張整備してくれないかな。指は動くけど腕が全く上がらないんだ。やっぱりダメだったか。あ、いやいや。私、ハデに喧嘩した。まだあとは私の音メールをなんでこたに
け危ない目にあってんのよスカーいやまあそのなんだ大したことじゃねえよ。Didn't show his eyes there? どうせあんたら兄弟は聞いたって言わないもんね。うん、私は今日の宿を探しに行くわ。<笑>何だったらうちに泊まってよ。Yeah. でも。気にすんなって。女房も娘も喜ぶしよう。<笑>よし、そうしよう。<笑>ほらほら、行くぞ。<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑>リシア。リシアちゃん。今日はエリシアの誕生日なのだ。なのだ。いくつになったの、エリシアちゃん。だ。めっちゃ。あいつらとは、小さい時からいつも一緒で、兄弟みたいなものですよ。んあんなだから心配ばっかだろ。ほ、yeah. んとですよ。たまに帰ってきたと思ったら腕を釈迦にしてるし、呼び出されてみれば、江戸は大怪我してるし、アロはなんか悩んでるし。だけど、何があったかなんて絶対言わないんですよ。リゼンブールを出るときも。ウィンリーちゃんなら、言わなくても分かってくれると思ったんだよ。はあ、ガーメイズ。でも。口で言わなきゃ伝わらないこともあります、はい、男ってのは言葉より行動で示す生き物だから苦しいことはなるべくなら自分以外の人に背負わせたくない心配もかけたくないだから言わないあの兄弟が弱音を吐いたらその時はきっちり受け止めてやるそれでいいんじゃないかエリシアちゃんエリシアちゃん。リなんだよ、エリシアちゃんは僕と遊ぶんだよ。えー、僕と娘さんもてもてですね。おや、グラスス。はい、小僧ども。<笑>うちの娘に手出したら、ただじゃお金ぞ。行動で示しすぎです。兄さんは生身の体があるんだから。飲まなきゃダメだよ。嫌いなもんは嫌いなの。おいまい。こう見えてもちゃんと伸びてんだぞ。あるはいいよな。体がでかくってさ。Oh, my blow up here. 僕は好きでこんな体になったんじゃない。悪かったよ。そうだよな。こうなったのも俺のせいだもんな。記憶だって。突き詰めればただの情報でしかない。人工的に構築することも可能なはずだ。お前。何言ってそれはもしかして僕は魂も記憶も本当は全部でっち上げた偽物だってことじゃないのかいどうなんだよ兄さんずっとそれを溜め込んでたのかそっか Let's clear the air Let's talk it out Too afraid to get the, get the answer. <laughs> 小さい頃から
いっぱい喧嘩したよなうん今思えばくったらねえことで喧嘩してたなウィンリーをお嫁さんにするのはどっちって喧嘩をした<笑>そんなの覚えてねえぞ僕が勝ったでも振られたあ,あそうごめん全部嘘だって言うのかよごめんどんなことしても元の体に戻りたいってあの気持ちも作り物だっていうのか作り物じゃないどんどん前へ進むぞ前へ進んで喧嘩も心ももっと強くなるぞ牛乳は<笑>飲む、うん、なるべく<笑><笑>もっともっと強くなろう、うん、やっぱり口で言わなきゃ伝わらないこともありますよねそうだな Feels like the episode's about to end and it's about to show me. Scar? Oh god, Kimberly. Oh wow, is this. He's back. Those red eyes. Kizunakin gets All right, folks, episode nine, almost there, almost there to the first 10 episodes, right? And I say that because to me, that kind of feels like the first milestone.、Uh, long journey ahead, of course, but yeah, almost 10 episodes in. And, you know, right at the end there, it took like a totally different path,、uh, totally different road, essentially, right? And it makes sense. It makes sense、um, because it did feel like a resolution episode, right?、Um, and, you know, in that sense, this、uh, rift, this internal conflict, Uh, it didn't really prolong it, right?、Uh, maybe, yeah, you know, I'll be honest. I thought maybe that is going to play a part for a couple of episodes. But yeah, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of happy. I am kind of happy that it's resolved、um, quite quickly or that it's been addressed in a timely fashion. And of course,、uh, the individual who ends up kind of facilitating this is their dear friend, Winry,、uh, who is just fantastic in this episode. You know, she, great character. Really is, and I, I really do hope to see so much more of her. And you know, they're kind of hinting at it. They're kind of hinting at it that, you know, I might get to see much more of her. But before I go any further, you know, Ed and her, that's certainly a thing, isn't it? I mean, it's so clear to see now. So I could totally see that being a thing throughout the, the series, right?、Uh, I mean, there's already more than enough hints,、uh, you know, through their behavior around each other, their mannerisms around each other, how they. Care for each other. Of course, both of them、uh, have their own unique perspective on it, right? How they kind of go about caring for each other.、Um, but yeah, you know, there's certainly something there.、Um, and yeah, I could totally see this being a thing throughout the series.、Um, and yeah, that feels lovely to me. You know, I love, I love seeing her around the Alrics. I love seeing her around Ed.、Uh, in fact, you see, you know, there's quite a fantastic moment, a great scene,、uh, Hughes and her. But, you know, you see by the end of it, Even Hughes、um, kind of ends up learning a bit, right? Even he ends up getting a, a new perspective、um, or kind of gets to see a different something else at play, right, in front of him and realizes, yeah, sometimes it's needed. Sometimes it is needed because that scene、uh, at Alicia Chan's birthday party,、um, how adorable is she, right?、Um, you can't blame Hughes for always kind of you know, gushing about her. I mean, Maze Hughes is certainly sharing some insightful. Um, perspective, right?、Um, as, as a male,、uh, as a man.、Um, and yeah, a lot of the things he's saying, yeah, they're kind of spot on, aren't they? <laughs>、um, a lot of us can kind of put ourselves in those shoes at one point in time or at some point in time. And honestly, I've got to say, this episode specifically as well, you could kind of feel the writing. You could feel the writing is from. A female perspective almost, right? And that makes sense to me because it was, it was, you know, it was brought to my attention that this is written by a woman. And I mean that as a compliment. 
the writing of this episode. But you know, going back to Maze Hughes, he's he's just a fantastic character in this series, in this story, uh, a fantastic supporting character uh, for this story. Be it for the Alrics, for Roy Mustang, for Winry, um, yeah, you know, I, I just love him. I love him in this story. Uh, you know, his role in this story, and also you know his jovial nature. Uh, yes, first of all, it's it really brings levity to the story as well. Um, but you know. There is something interesting about that, given the fact that he was also part of that war, right? Um, now, I know he's not, he's not a state alchemist or anything, but I believe he took some part in it, right? He played his part in it. So to see him kind of maintain this jovial nature, though, you know, I have seen him kind of switch at a moment's notice as well, especially uh, twice. You know, I get to see that twice in the last episode. Uh, you know, he's got a serious side for sure. And, you know, sometimes... There's moments, and even in this episode, you see, you know, it's kind of as if behind that jovial nature, there is something there. There is something else there, you know. Um, sometimes his eyes do kind of feel a bit flat. Uh, and other times they're just lit up, so full of joy. So, yeah, Maze Hughes is an interesting one for sure. As insightful as his talk or his perspective was for Winry, uh, you see that... It, there is a different take on that as well. There, there is another perspective to that. You know, by the end of that scene, you might have noticed I did one of these, right? Uh, that's usually me kind of going, yeah, you know, that's sound. That makes sense for the most part, for sure. Um, yeah, you know, his, ins his insight on the emotions of men and how they handle it and how they internalize it sometimes and keep it to themselves. I mean, Maze Hughes seems to have a complete understanding of Ed as well, right? That's been one of the running themes. Um, that's kind of brought out in this episode, kind of, you know, faced head on, facilitated by their childhood friend, right? Um, and also, um, uh, Ross, right? She was, I mean, spot on, spot on. And, you know, I love how she took that chance, right? She didn't care about the ramifications of slapping a state alchemist uh, who who has the same rank as a general, essentially, right? Though, of course, Ed doesn't care about any of that. And they find out and they kind of, you know, uh, let out a sigh of uh, relief, a massive risk on her end to kind of share this, you know, share her thoughts uh, with our young Ed, right? Um, you know, he's mature, Young Ed is certainly mature, and you see a lot of that maturity on display in this episode, especially in his handling of Al. Uh, even though, you know, there's that really cathartic moment up top. It's so full of heart, right? It's so full of heart, this anime, this story. Um, you know, them kind of duking it out, uh, a mini training session to kind of blow off some steam and kind of help Al really get out of that headspace again, right? I love that moment. And then, of course, the scene that follows up. Wow, wow. It's, it's such a touching scene, man. It really is. The, like I mentioned before, this is adequately titled Brotherhood, right? Um, this kind of reiterates that, you know, no matter, no matter what happens, um, no matter how dark uh, the situation, no matter how bleak the situation, um, they always have each other. Right. This this bond they have, it's always there. Yes, there's ups and downs, and that's normal. Right. That's all normal. And I'm sure I'll get a few more of those. In fact, you know, I would love to see them kind of separate for a bit, even, right? Um you know, maybe go a few episodes of just Al and someone else, and then maybe just Ed and someone else, right? Um, that would be great, right? And it would kind of continue this realistic take on it, right? That's the thing I love about this anime so far. Yes, you know, there's humor. There's humor. And, you know, I've heard from many people that, you know, it takes them out of it, right? But the thing that uh, that helps me really kind of accept it or has helped me accept it since day one, really, is how upfront it was about that. How, how big of an impact or how big of a role the humor plays in this, right? It, it feels seamless. Like I mentioned before, it feels seamless. Um, and, you know... It, some of the humor, yes, yes, you know, goofy moments, fun moments, but some of the humor actually is seamlessly integrated into the storytelling of this anime, I believe. I believe it's quite effective, actually. But yeah, you know, the fact that it's really upfront about it, I, I don't I don't really have a problem with uh, the humor of this. I think it's executed uh, quite nicely, actually. But, you know, let's circle back to my initial point about Ross and her brutal honesty. Right. And the courage it must have taken for her to, you know, 
kind of go through with this because she truly felt, she strongly felt that she has to um, say this, right? Share this, her feelings on this uh, as an adult, right? She is an adult after all. Um, and that's another thing I like about this anime. Uh, oh, it's so good. It's so good actually because it's full of these adults, right? That are full of knowledge, that are more than happy to help these young children, right? These young adults, uh, especially Ed, right? Um, yet on the other end of that, you have Ed, who seems to have this resentment, right, towards adults. Uh, he's been self-reliant from an early age. Um, but yeah, you know, like I mentioned, uh, perhaps the most important uh, adult in his life kind of abandoned them, right? That's how Ed must feel. And, you know, I've seen that. If you go all the way back to that day, episode two, his feelings are really put up front. You know, don't even mention him, right? He didn't even come to our mother's funeral. Right, so you see the effect it's had on him and his, you know, uh, resentment towards adults or, you know, this idea he's built up, uh, this identity he's built up since then that he doesn't need adults. He doesn't need to rely on anyone, right? Um, he has himself and his brother. That's all he needs, right? And you see that it does get him into trouble sometimes. And for that reason, of course, Ross is making a great point, right? You have to... You have to learn to open up. You have to learn to, you know, let others help you, let others in, right? Um, and, you know, that's one of the great running themes of this. Actually, I believe I did mention in one of my uh, discussions earlier on, I think, that I could totally see throughout the series the progression of Ed and his stance on all of this, right? Letting people in, letting others help him. You know, he doesn't have to fight the battles alone. Um, and, yeah, and I maintain that. I especially after seeing this episode as well. That slowly, right, episode by episode, um, storyline by storyline, I'll see that Ed is going to let these people in. Uh, he is going to, you know, utilize uh, all the help he can get. Um, and I'm so here for that. I'm so here for that progression, that character progression as well. Also, you know, before I go any further, you know, I'm not trying to diminish the role his mother played. Of course, she's incredibly important. But I am saying perhaps maybe the father might have been someone so important to him uh, that, you know, him kind of almost running out on them, again, from Ed's perspective, um, it had a major impact on him uh, up until this day, you know, on his growth. Um, but, you know, speaking of this dad, <laughs> the missing dad, the father, who I initially mentioned that the situation really does remind me of Grisha Jaeger, right? Um, I'm not going to go any further than that uh, in terms of, or in case of spoilers, though Shingeki, anyone who's seen anime has probably seen Shingeki, right? So I'm sure there's, like I mentioned before, I'm sure there's this incredible um, story there. You know, I'm sure he had his reasons. Yes, from one angle, you could totally see how this young child might think uh, that there's no excuse for his behavior, for his absence, you know, his absence throughout some of the most important moments, uh, some of the moments they needed him the most, right? You could totally see that angle for sure. But I think my immediate thought on this missing dad has always been, okay, the fact that he's not around, especially in some of these really trying moments, um, you know, the death of their mother, uh, he couldn't even be there for that. To me, it's not, you know, it's not a case of, oh, wow, this is a terrible person, a terrible father. Yes, <laughs> from one angle, sure. But, you know, to me, the first thing I think of is, oh, he must be a part of something crazy. He must be, you know, mixed up in something so crazy that he cannot be around his family, right? Even for these moments, important moments. But yeah, that plot point, the missing father, whew, yeah, I'm sure once I get to it, once I get to it or once the, the story gets to it, it's about to be fascinating, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's going to be exciting. Really exciting. So yeah, you know, I've got to say, it was really great to see Scar again. Uh, he is a character I really like since his introduction. Um, I mean, I even got a glimpse of his past or a bit of um, backstory there, right? Bit of a flashback. Goddamn Kimberly, this madman who I also like. I do, I really do. You know, this, you might have noticed, I actually like a lot of these characters. A lot of them, most of them even, right? Yeah. That's a sign of uh, a great ensemble cast, right? Um, wow, wow, I'm, I'm really excited about this anime uh, and the direction it's heading into. But yeah, Kimberly, uh, Kimberly and Scar had a run-in and looks like Kimberly did quite a number on Scar. Um, but yeah, I, 
I can feel it. Surely there's there's going to be a rematch. Surely they are going to come across each other, right? Scar has a lot a lot of unfinished business. A lot of unfinished business. And notice how he immediately asked about his arm. Is it still attached? Is it still intact? Yeah, it's there. And to me, it feels like it's pretty clear. The reason he was so, you know, uh, quick to kind of ask about that is because of the ink on his arm. You know, I mean, first of all, it looks cool as hell. But, you know, there's clearly a purpose for it. To me, it feels like in, indeed this is the reason uh, he is able to kind of partake in alchemy. Or is able to pull off the destruction alchemy right? These might be his alchemy circles, right? Uh, transmutation circles, quite special ones, right? And I thought it was quite uh, the delivery of that line, uh, that line of dialogue and the voice acting there. Uh, you know, it's from my family. It's a bond from my family. Whew. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, there, there's something really quite interesting going on there. But let's kind of shift back to one of the stars of the episode, Winry. Uh, wow, you know, great character. You know, here you have someone who kind of lived through the trauma as well, right? It, it affected her so much as well. You know, this is family. The Alrics, Ed and Al, Alphonse, this, the, you know, these are like her brothers. For now, for now at least. And I find it kind of, you know, cute that as they're going over all the silly and stupid fights they've had over things, they even fought over her, right? <laughs> who gets to marry her. Uh, and notice how Al... Or sorry, not Al. Ed doesn't even remember this unless he's just kind of pretending not to remember. Um, and yeah, you know, it's quite telling that even then, you know, she kind of declined Al. Uh, again, it's just they're young children. It's all cute. She's a part of this. Um, she's a part of all that trauma that they they had to go through, right? She was there. She was there, right? Um, it had a major impact on her as well and and on her life. If you go back to that moment in episode two, that day, it's it's a stunning shot, right, of young Al and Winry. Uh, though, of course, Al, you know, he doesn't really age in the same capacity. But still, you know, it's them kind of overlooking the beautiful fields. It's a beautiful frame. It's one of my favorites of any anime ever, uh, even beyond anime. It's a stunning, it's a stunning shot. You know, there she's again kind of sad about the prospect of losing two more people that she cares for dearly, right? Uh, like she lost her parents, right? Um, I mean, she's she's faced immense loss herself. Um, and yeah, you know, uh, you have to feel bad for her. You do feel bad for her. I felt bad for her in a lot of these moments here. You know, even though she knows their nature and how they are, you know, she can't help but think about the notion that, you know, they might not really care for her as she cares for them, right? It's only natural to think like that, of course, right? Because she feels like, you know, anytime they actually show up anymore is anytime she's needed. You see that this idea that they might have a rift, uh, the two Elrics, it hits her hard, right? She, You see how upsetting it is for her. Um, and she immediately steps in. She's like, no, 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 no. Um, because you could tell even though she's been so upset and sad about losing her childhood friends um, in the sense that they had to leave and kind of, you know, go on this path, on this journey, she always felt um, that they have each other. You know, to me, it feels like it's been this source of relief for her, you know, that it has put her at ease, that at least they have each other out there together. You know, they have each other's back. They're always together. Uh, but then to see this, you know, to see this rift, to see how much, they've kind of internalized their feelings uh, and how silly it is that they're just not talking it out um, as they do by the end of it and, you know, get it out in the open. A lot of things can be solved just by talking, right? Uh, but you also get to see uh, whew, um, this internalized uh, self-hatred, everything that Ed has been going through, right? Uh, it really does recontextualize some of these moments, you know, simple moments like them trying to go to bed after they have that meal the first time at Ms. Hughes's house, right? Um, you know, Al, he's just being so innocent. He's being so, he's being a kid, right? Writing down all the things he wants to try out once he gets his body back. Imagine Ed in that moment. You could tell, you could tell it must, it must kill him, right? But he puts on this front. He, you know, he has to be strong for his brother. Uh, yeah, there is that self-hatred, right? But I love that it's out in it's out in the open. They've talked it out. Uh, they're on the same page again, right? Uh, united front. Let's move forward. Um, great. It's a great episode, man. It's so full of heart. This anime is so full of heart. Before I forget, their teacher, their sensei, 
did I not just see her randomly walk by in the back? Um, I remember that face. I remember that hair. You know, it's quite a striking look, right? The dark hair. Um, yeah, there's a clear shot of her in episode two. I remember, you know, they mentioned how they trained hard. Uh, I'm pretty sure that was her just casually walking by. I kind of love that. I kind of love that, you know, she's like casually walking by, but like, there's no reason to kind of, you know, focus on her. But again, you know, it, it, the way it's kind of depicted, the audience simply has to notice. It's impossible to miss, I think, right? The way she kind of goes by in the frame, right? It's empty and then she really takes up that frame behind them. And again, you know, once you have that image of her in your mind from that day, from episode two, uh, yeah, then, you know, you kind of just see, oh, that's her. Right? So I love how she just casually showed up, but, you know, they didn't make a big deal about it. Uh, so I thought that was kind of cool, right? That she just happened to be in Central. Now, I'm pretty sure that's her. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> but yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty positive. I'm pretty um, confident that's her that just kind of walked by casually behind them. And also, you know, one last thing. Uh, the animation, uh, the drawing of Al in that suit of armor. Wow, it continues to be so impressive, so emotive. Right? Especially given the fact that it is a suit of armor. Again, the lighting, the use of shadows, uh, the use of the eyes. The, you know, the eyes are the, the windows to the soul, after all. It's all used to perfection, really, right? Um, it, it really is quite impressive how emotive the suit of armor is. Again, the voice acting certainly plays a big role here. Um, you know, Alphonse's voice acting uh, or voice actor here. Uh, you have to give them a lot of credit. But yeah, that's about it for this one, folks. Enjoyable episode, for sure. You know, I really I really appreciated the resolution to this. And I appreciated the timely manner it's kind of wrapped up in. Right then, if you enjoyed that, consider dropping a like. Consider dropping some comments, giving your thoughts. If you're interested in full length or perhaps even early access, there's also uh, social media and links for all of this stuff is in the uh, description and in the pinned comment. So yeah, you know, check it out if you're into that. Whew. Right then, that's about it for this one, folks. Uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to continue this. Thank you for joining me and thank you for your time as time is precious. And I do hope to see you again soon for the next one. Until then, take it easy. Mm -hmm.